Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Chalmers. Welcome. Please be seated. Let's prepare for our worship service with prayer, a time of quiet prayer. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray to the Lord. This morning we're going to sing our call to worship. So first of all, remain seated. And if you would turn in the hymn book to number 430, the words are on the screen as well, but I, I want you to turn in your hymn book to number 430 uh, because I'm going to attempt to, um, to read the words that are printed here in French. So we'll sing the English and then the French, which is the third line, and then we'll sing again the English words. So the third line, as you can see in French, would be something like this. L'éternel est l'auteur de la vie, créateur, souverain de l'histoire. Nous te louons, Seigneur, de fond des cœurs remplis de joie et d'amour. And then Alléluia, Alléluia, Alléluia. So uh, Beth will play it through uh, once, and then we'll, uh, we'll sing English, and then French and English again, and we'll remain seated.
bow in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you are mighty and everlasting. You are beyond our knowledge and understanding. Yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose life illumines the world, whose love transfigures our hearts, whose words transform our living. And so this morning we pray that you draw us into the likeness of Christ to bring you glory in the name of the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God of grace and glory. You reveal your presence to your world in radiant glory and gentle whispers on mountaintops and lowly plains, in classrooms and hospital beds, in homes and in churches, in creation and in cities, in silence and in beauty. Yours is the presence that pushes past fear. Yours is the touch that transforms doubt. We come before you this morning to dwell in your goodness, to bask in your light, and to offer you the praise you deserve. God of mercy and forgiveness, we come to you now confessing that which keeps us from living fully in your presence. Forgive us, Lord, for being distracted by greed and pride, for lingering in disappointment and anger, rather than following you with joy and dedication. Forgive our failure to hear your voice calling us into the hope you offer. Transfigure our lives by your grace, loving God. Mold our will to yours so we can dwell with you and one another more closely. Hear these our prayers that we pray in Jesus' name. May we not be afraid, for your forgiveness shines into the world in Christ and scatters the darkness. The morning star rises in our hearts, and we are made new. May we know that we are forgiven, and in the light of Christ, forgive one another. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let's sing to God's glory a hymn for Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, if you're singing from the hymn book, it's number 187. We'll be singing it to um, a more familiar tune, Hifridol. We have come at Christ's own bidding. Let's sing to God's glory.
please be seated and God be with you, the children and teachers in our Sunday school. The Lord bless you. <clears throat> Let's again pray, pray to the Lord as we prepare to hear the word. Let's pray. God of majesty and mystery, God of radiant light and love, by the power of your spirit, open our hearts and minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who is the living word. Amen. Turning to the Hebrew scriptures, the law, the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, chapter 34, starting at verse 29, one of the lectionary readings for this Sunday. Let us hear the word of God. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near to him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. We now read responsively from Psalm 99, the first five verses. We begin and end the reading by singing the refrain. Let the peoples tremble. The Lord sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, exalted over all the people. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is the Lord, mighty ruler, lover of justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord your God, worship at God's footstool. Holy is the Lord.
The Gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9. This tells the story of Christ's transfiguration on the mount. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, 
But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified, and they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. We're going to sing, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Please stand as you're able. During uh, Steve Bell's concert here just a few weeks ago, he 
he made reference to um, a British poet, Malcolm Geit, and talked about how uh, he and Malcolm Geit had collaborated on uh, various musical and other projects. And um, in preparing for today's message, I came across uh, a poem, a sonnet by Malcolm Geit that has to do specifically with the Transfiguration. It goes like this. For that one moment in and out of time, on that one mountain where all mountains meet, the daily veil that covers the sublime in darkling glass fell dazzled at his feet. There were no angels full of eyes and wings, just living glory full of truth and grace. The love that dances at the heart of things shone out upon us from a human face. And to that light, the light in us leaped up. We felt it quicken somewhere deep within a, a sudden blaze of long extinguished hope trembled and tingled through the tender skin. Nor can this blackened sky, this darkened scar, eclipse that glimpse of how things really are. I'm particularly taken by the line in the poem, the love that dances at the heart of things shone out upon us from a human face. Several years ago now, I was able to attend a, um, a hymn, hymn conference at Knox College, a conference on hymnody and hymn singing, and it was um, facilitated, led by um, hymn writer and theologian Brian Wren. There are some Brian Wren hymns in our, um, in our hymnal, and uh, he's written several books. I have one of his little books called Praising a Mystery. And this is what Brian, Rez, uh, Brian Wren says about, um, about the mystery of God, in effect. He says, there will always be mystery in authentic religion. But I don't apologize for that. I glory in it. Because if I could fully understand the Christian faith, there would be nothing about the gospel big enough or powerful enough to do what I need. What I am pleading for is a balance to life, he continues. We must ask and answer as many questions as we can. We must never stop searching for the truth. But once we have reached the end of our mind's leash, we must acknowledge that there is more to life than we understand. As God has said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. After we've wrestled with the great issues of life, there will always be an appropriate time to kneel in reverence and humility before that which is mystery. I appreciate his call for a reverent humility in the face of the splendor, the glory, the majesty, and the mystery of God's presence. Now I like to think through things, I like to attack things critically, I like to analyze and and consider and reflect and and we definitely need to use all of those tools in the toolbox. And there is a lot to think about and consider and to reflect on in the account of Jesus' transfiguration this morning as it was read from the Gospel of Luke. Because it points to the person and the work of Christ. Just as a couple of examples, the, the transfiguration in Luke's gospel follows Jesus' prediction of his passion, his death, and his resurrection. That's, that's not accidental. That's significant. In fact, I'll come back to that in just a moment or two. But the reading today began about eight days after these sayings. The sayings were what Jesus said about his passion, his suffering, death, and resurrection. 
Notice also, according to Luke, that Jesus is praying at the time of the transfiguration. Christ is praying when, as I like to say, all heaven breaks loose. And there you have Moses and Elijah. Jesus is keeping good company here, somehow present with him, these towering figures from Israel's past, representing the law and the prophets, presumably. There in conversation with the transfigured Christ, and Luke adds this detail, they're talking about his departure. You know what that word is in the text? His exodus. They're talking of his exodus. Moses and Elijah and Christ having this conversation about his exodus, his upcoming crucifixion. And then we have the cloud of the divine presence into enveloping the disciples and Christ and Moses and Elijah and the voice from heaven, the voice of God affirming Jesus and confirming his identity and his mission. Now there's a lot to think about there. There's a lot to consider. There's, there's a much to reflect on. But what I want to emphasize, at least in the first part of my message this morning, is that when we get a glimpse of the glory of God during whatever mountaintop experience that might be for you or me, may we too be found, to use the text of the hymn, in wonder, love, and praise. When we hear the word of God transforming our thoughts and touching our hearts, may we bow down and praise God from whom all blessings flow. When by the touch of the hand of the great physician, we move from brokenness to greater wholeness, may we go in and out of the house of God walking and leaping and praising God, as did the healed man in the early church. When we're about the work of the Lord, doing daily discipleship duties in the valley and plain below, may we receive the strength and the guidance of Almighty God. And when we sense the life-giving presence of the Lord among us, within us, and when words fail us, May we bow down in reverent awe and sacred silence before God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. In other words, as we come into the presence of the Almighty, may we discover true worship. As Brian Brian Wren once said, For God's sake, please do not try to explain away the mystery. I like the way William Willimon comes at this. He says, It's as if Jesus takes our hand and leads us up into another realm. He shines before us, mysterious and wonderful, beyond our ability to explain or to understand. And maybe that's when worship, when church, when being a disciple of Jesus is as good as it gets. And we exclaim, as those first disciples exclaimed on the mountaintop, Lord, it's good to be here. We might say, Lord, even though I have questions that remain unanswered, it's good to be here. Lord, even though your word and your way sometimes confounds me, it's good to be here. Lord, even though life is hard right now, it's still good to be here. It's good to be here, Lord, with you by my side and with you leading me on the way, all the way. It's good to be here in the presence of Almighty God, glorifying and praising God who reveals himself in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a moment ago I said that, that this account of, of Christ's transfiguration in Luke follows Jesus' prediction of his passion, his death, 
on the cross and his resurrection. It, it also, I think, not only comes on the heel of that prediction, but I think the transfiguration account points ahead to the cross and to the empty tomb to give us even deeper insight into what was still to come. Uh, uh, Tom Wright has offered a brief but very uh, powerful reflection on this, and I'll, and I'll share this now. He says, The scene at the transfiguration offers a strange parallel and contrast to the crucifixion. If you're going to meditate on the one, you might like to hold the other in your mind as well as a sort of backdrop. Here on the mountain is Jesus revealed in glory. There on a hill outside Jerusalem is Jesus revealed in shame. Here his clothes are shining white. There they have been stripped off and soldiers have gambled for them. Here he is flanked by Moses and Elijah, two of Israel's greatest heroes representing the law and the prophets. There he is flanked by two brigands. Here a bright cloud overshadows the scene. There darkness comes upon the land. Here Peter blurts out how wonderful it all is. There Peter is hiding in shame after denying that he even knows Jesus. Here a voice from God himself declares that this is his wonderful son. There a pagan soldier declares in surprise that this truly is the Son of God. The mountaintop, Tom Wright says, the mountaintop explains the hilltop and vice versa. And notice that the account of Christ's transfiguration is on the very last Sunday of Epiphany and the Sunday before we begin the Lenten journey. Hold on to this story. Live with this story. Let this story live with you over the weeks through Lent as we come closer to Golgotha, the place of the cross. Finally, it's noticeable that when we hear the voice of God from above reaffirming the identity of Jesus as his beloved son, then God invites, maybe you would say commands, the disciples to listen to Jesus as he makes his way to the cross and beyond. Listen to him, the divine voice says. This is my beloved, my chosen. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus who says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Listen to the one who also said, Love your enemies. Listen to Jesus when he says, You cannot serve God and money. Listen to him when he challenges us to seek First, the kingdom of God. Are you listening? Are we listening? Are we listening to Christ? He has so much to say to us. So much to say for us. I am the resurrection and the life, he declares. I came that you might have life, life in all of its abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life. For the sheep, are we listening? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Listen, listen to him. You can hear these mountaintop words from God, both as command and invitation. Listen to the one who, who loves you more than you can know and who laid down his life in love for you. Listen to Christ who rose again for us and our salvation who is with us even now by the power of His Spirit. Because I believe listening to Jesus leads to following Jesus, which leads to abundant life, eternal life in His name. If you want to get a life, 
Listen to the one who walked this earth, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, and rose again. That you, that we may live as God intended us to live. Listening to Jesus will give us courage when the going gets tough. Recall the reassuring and empowering words of Christ, I will be with you always even to the end of the age. Listen to him. As we listen to Jesus to Christ, we too can be transfigured, that is transformed, so that we are more like him day by day. More like the people God has created and called us to be. And by the power of his spirit, we can become people of character, people of compassion, people of conviction, people of courage in a world that so desperately needs such timeless and timely virtues. Friends, the living God invites us to listen to Jesus so that we may become more like him as we enter this season of Lent. Let me conclude just with one verse from the poem of Malcolm Geith. His poem about the transfiguration, he wrote, There were no angels full of eyes and wings, just living glory full of truth and grace. The love that dances at the heart of things shone out upon us from a human face. And we say, thanks be to God. Amen. The life and mission announcements of Christ Church, including Chalmers, of course. And I begin with welcome and an invitation to our fellowship time following worship and also with words of, of celebration and congratulation. Two, two different people spoke to me this morning, and so I actually have two notes, but it's really about the same people. And... Um, Apparently, uh, Christine and Tom Hunter are celebrating um, an anniversary today. So, well, that's wonderful, and we uh, celebrate with you, and congratulate you. I, I don't have the number, actually, so... Uh, we'll, we'll, 57. Beautiful. It's 57th anniversary of your wedding. Praise the Lord. Good to celebrate with you both. 
Other celebrations, we uh, also um, echo, and uh, if you have a special celebration, then perhaps we can share with one another over the coffee and conversation following the service. Uh, let me just mention a few things um, directly here. One is the study group, appropriately, I think, following the Transfiguration account, is Who is Jesus? That begins tomorrow night um, right here uh, in the choir room, I believe, at 7 p.m. Um, there's two things. This study will run until just before Easter, Monday nights, from 7 to 8.30. So we're going to really uh, keep things to about an hour and a half, Monday evenings. Um, and uh, several have signed up, actually, more, uh, maybe 10 or 12, which is wonderful. There are still two or three of these uh, little study booklets available. So if you have not yet signed up and are interested, you can still sign up. If you have signed up but haven't picked up the study booklet, please do that this morning as well and read the first, uh, the introduction and the first chapter for tomorrow's discussion. So that study begins more or less coinciding with the season of Lent. And we'll mark the beginning of Lent with Ash Wednesday worship here uh, in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Um, this, this service includes what's called the imposition of ashes, the, the marking of ashes on the forehead, the sign of the cross. Um, I, I mention that because I don't want you to be discouraged from coming to the service because you're not sure what that's all about. First of all, if you, if you are at the service and decide not to come forward for the, uh, the sign of the cross with the ashes, that's totally fine. Um, uh, but it is a in, more informal service of about 30 to 40 minutes starting at 7 o'clock this, this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And I'll just mention now as well that um, I'll be uh, following up with a few of you and um, certainly open to any others who would like to uh, have a conversation about becoming professing members of the church. We're hoping to have a Sunday uh, to welcome new professing members before Easter and so if that's something you would like to know more about or are interested in, I have been in conversation with uh, two or three people. There may be a few others. So we'll move forward with that in a, in a timely way. Uh, please look at the other announcements that are printed. And if you want even more information, go to our church website, chalmerslondon.com. Let's continue now to praise God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Sure. Just because a number of people asked. For first off, um, when we first met Père Noël in uh, December, and there was a volunteer police officer there as the ladies met uh, Santa Claus for the first time, and he heard a one-minute version of the Mobondo family story, and it moved him so much he reached in and offered us, our family, uh, a number of free tickets to the London Knights game that weekend, which didn't work for us because of the carol sing. And when I shared this with the ladies, the dean said something that really has, has struck me over the past few months. She said, wow, there are a lot of angels in Canada. And those angels came through this past Saturday when we moved the Mabondo family into their new home just down the street. Uh, that certainly helped as we were getting them all here today uh, a lot <laughs> faster. So to all the angels out there, and you know who you are, thank you so much. A very common question has been asked, and that is, the furniture's still in the upper hall. <laughs> What's going on with that? It's because of so much generosity that the Mobondos and us have to figure out what works in the space and what doesn't. So just again, take that as another sign, a good sign. And uh, so part three of the move, right Jules, will be this Saturday as we uh, move some of that furniture into the new place just down the way. And if you want to help or can help on Saturday, we'll be, that'll be about a shorter one, about two hours I think on Saturday. So again, thank you to all the angels out there that have helped in their own special way and on behalf of the Mabondos and the Thibodeaux and everybody that loves them. It's been, it's been a busy week but a wonderful week as they celebrate their new home. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Thank you for that update. And just a reminder, so this Saturday coming, part three, it, uh, speak, speak to yourself, speak to you or Liz or me or, or whoever else, um, just if you can assist with that. Thank you. Let's continue in our worship. Let's praise God with our tithes and our gifts, the offering will be received.
Are you in the middle? turn to the offering prayer and pray together saying gracious God may we shine with your light and love as we give these gifts of money and as we serve you and participate in your mission in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord God of revelation God of encounter, God of provision. You bless us with your presence and wisdom. We marvel at the wonders of your love. You created a, a beautiful world that reveals your majesty. And you sent your son to show us how to live with compassion. We praise you that your Holy Spirit guides us on our way. And we thank you for opening our eyes to your presence each day. Help us, Lord, to recognize you not only in mountaintop experiences, but also in the everyday tasks of life. God of love, there is much in this world that needs the transformation only you can provide. And so we pray where there is violence that you instill your peace. Where there is poverty, send your sustenance. Where there is confusion, bring wisdom. Where there is chaos, bring order. Transfigure the hearts of the rich to share. Move the wills of the powerful to act with justice. And where minds and hearts are troubled, bring your comfort, we pray. Where pain is crippling, grant release. God of mercy, hear the cries of all who suffer and bring hope, the hope of new life with you. This morning we lift up in our prayers our mission partners at the London Community Chaplaincy, Reverend Pam Cullen and her team of, uh, of workers, staff, and volunteers. The, all of the various congregations that support and work with the chaplaincy, both in, at Southdale and Limberlost. We pray, God, that you will continue to encourage that ministry, that you will inspire the staff and the volunteers to make even a greater difference in the lives of those struggling with issues of poverty and addiction. We ask this in the name of Christ. Christ Jesus our Lord, whose radiance and splendor we perceive yet again. God of eternity, we pray that your glory will fill your church. 
Give your people everywhere the energy to shine wherever there is darkness, persecution, and despair. Bless this and each congregation with wisdom and strength. Give us all a greater love of your holiness, greater delight in your mystery, greater joy in your presence. Hear these prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. For we pray through Jesus Christ who revealed your will to us, who showed us your unconditional love, and who invited us to follow him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our praise team again will lead us as we give God the glory in song. We'll be singing ancient words. Please stand as you're able.
You may be seated. Would the uh, children come up to the, to the front of the church sanctuary just for a few moments this morning. And you can just, you can just sit on the steps here. Um, if you can sit so that you can see the screen, that will be helpful too. And, and everybody will, will see the same pictures that, that we're going to see. So you can sit either side. Thank you. Um, this, this Sunday, we, we've been thinking about and appreciating the story of the transfiguration of Jesus. And we've been hearing this from the Gospel of Luke about how Jesus' face and, and clothing were just shining on the mountaintop. And I want you to look at the screen because you're going to see uh, um, various artists' depictions or drawings of the transfiguration of Christ from different cultures, different countries all over the world. I'm not going to comment on each one, but, but just see how each one tells the story of how, of how Jesus and three of the disciples and how Christ was transfigured or his, his appearance transformed. And these are interesting images from artists from all over the world, really, from not just North America, but from Africa and Europe and, and Asia as well. The artists are trying to, in some way, without words, but with the pictures, show us something of the mystery, something of the, of the dazzling nature of Christ, something of the glory um, of the story. And, and I want you to listen to the story as Ralph Milton tells it in this book, Living God's Way. Uh, we'll, we'll keep that image up before us, but listen to these words as well, uh, boys and girls, everybody, in fact. Um, this is how Ralph Milton tells the story of Jesus' transfiguration. He calls it Jesus on the mountaintop. What happened, Peter? Mark asked. I can't tell you, not now, Peter answered. Are you sick? You and James and John, you, you look so pale. No, no, we're not sick, Mark. Peter w was shaking a little. Something wonderful happened. But I can't tell you about it, not now. Years after Jesus was killed and came back to life, Peter finally told Mark the story. Jesus took us up to the top of the mountain, said Peter. It was a long climb. We were tired when we got there. Just you and Jesus, Mark asked. No, James and his brother John were there too. They, they know what happened. I'll never forget that time, said Peter. All of a sudden, Jesus changed. His, his face shone. It was like looking into the sun. And his clothes turned white, really white. There were two people with Jesus. Who, Mark asked. Elijah and Moses. How, how did you know? I don't know how we knew, said Peter, but we knew. And Jesus was talking to them. So what did you do, said Mark? I didn't know what to do. I said to Jesus, shouldn't we build three little houses here? I could build one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. It sounds silly now that I think about it, but, but I was so afraid. I didn't know what to say. What did Jesus say, Mark asked. He didn't say anything. A bright cloud came and covered him. Then we heard a voice. James and John heard it too. You can ask them. Was it God? It must have been. The voice said, This is my son. I love him. Listen to him. That's all? Asked Mark. That's all? What did you do? We were so scared we fell flat on our faces. But then we heard Jesus saying very gently, Don't be afraid. Get up. Mark was shaking his head. I don't understand. Every time I think I understand, I hear something new. Then I have to think about it all over again. Yeah, said Peter. I know what you mean. Today we celebrate the transfiguration of Jesus. And God said from the cloud, listen to him. Listen to Jesus. He's my beloved son. And so we're here to listen to him and to serve him and to follow him. And we're going to follow him and worship a Christ by saying to together the prayer that he taught us. So we'll just stay where we are. We'll just stay seated and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let's say it together. 
Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you for listening so carefully. Uh, please go back to your seats with your family and friends. And we're going to close the service with another song of praise. We're going to sing, There is a Redeemer. It's number 358 if we're singing from the book of praise. There is a Redeemer. And serve the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore.